The market's been acting pretty strange lately, and the question of this video is going to try to answer is how low can the market go? Here we're looking at the S&P 500, and we can see it normally trades between 15 and 18 times earnings over the last two decades. When it got really overvalued, it corrected, and now we're seeing the market really overvalued, and we're starting to see a correction. But it's a market of stocks, not a stock market, as we always say. And so what I'm going to try to look at here is what parts of the market have been correcting the most and how much has valuation mattered in this equation. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. And today we're going to be talking about the stock market and how low can the stock market go. And I did a study. I, one of the advantages of having the Fast Graphs Fundamental Analyzer software tool is I can go through and look at something even as extensive as the S&P 500, and I can go through it very quickly. And I literally went through all 500 constituents of the S&P 500, and I identified 110 names that I considered significantly overvalued. And remember, not all the S&P 500 stocks are overvalued, but I also wanted to show the ones that are actually corrected the most, the ones that are participating in this bearish um, market that we've had here recently. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a very high-level video. I'm going to just scan these companies very quickly. I'm not going to talk about them. I'm not going to mention what they do or who they are or anything like that. I just want you, the viewer, to get a perspective of, number one, what valuation means and how valuation can really affect your long-term results. So let's start here. So these are the 110 S&P 500 companies that I've identified as being overvalued and that are participating in the current market. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with Agilent Technologies. You can see the stock has disconnected from fair value like it's normally traded at historically. And now that it's gotten overvalued in this recent market, we've seen a significant correction in Agilent. The next one is the Merrill Biofed. You can see the effects of overvaluation in the past. It went overvalued again. Now we're starting to see valuation rear its ugly head again as the stock begins to become attractive. Accenture is one that is normally traded at reasonable levels. Historically, it's gotten really overvalued since COVID. We can see the correction starting to happen. These stocks are correcting more than the undervalued stocks. And I think I want to make that clear. So this drop that we've seen in the market so far is really coming from these names. Here's Adobe. Adobe was, again, reasonably priced, but we've had five or six years of excessive overvaluation. Now we're starting to see a significant correction or possible reversion to the mean beginning to happen. Analog devices, very similarly, we see the stock is really starting to get impacted by its high valuation. Automatic data processing is starting to show signs of coming into reasonable valuation. Autodesk has been falling, you know, pretty dramatically for the last year and a half. And, you know, you can see that overvaluation here, you know, we've had about a year here now of really dead money. You've had some volatility, but the stock is actually falling in value. AES Corporation, kind of a flat company, doesn't have much in the way of growth. For some reason, it got overvalued, does pay a pretty decent dividend, and we can see it's correcting now and reverting back to the mean valuation, which is the orange line on these graphs. Albemarle is an interesting one because you can see how closely it tracks earnings. It got overvalued a couple of years ago, corrected, went back into attractive valuation, then screamed right up to the top. This is one of the world's largest lithium manufacturers. And you can see now it's correcting. Valuation is beginning to affect its high valuation being affected. Align Technology, another one that was overvalued, didn't do much when it was overvalued. Then some reason after covid Everything got optimistic. The market drove the stock price up dramatically. Now we're starting to see a significant correction in the line. Allegiant is one that you can start seeing the valuation coming back into alignment. Applied Materials was you know, tracking earnings beautifully all these years, got overvalued. Now we're starting to see the correction happening in Applied Materials. Advanced micro devices, similarly, you know, erratic earnings growth. The stock hasn't really done much. Then it got had some hot earnings. It got very expensive, and now the stock is beginning to show signs of, you know, bearish territory as it's moving back into fair value. Here's a company, Arista Networks. You can see how closely it's a growth stock, how closely it was tracking earnings, got overvalued, and has now come back into fair value territory. Here's Ansys Inc., you know, dramatically overvalued. Marking time here for a year, it's beginning to show, you know, cracks in its armor, starting to come back into alignment with fair valuation. Aon PLC, the company has tracked earnings again beautifully. Now we're starting to see the company 
from, you know, suffer from its high valuation territory. Great company, still doing terrific work, as most of these are, you know, generating good numbers, but the earnings don't really support the valuation that the company's currently trading at. Same with Aptiv PLC. Now, they started to have some weakness in earnings. They even cut their dividend. The stock got really significantly overvalued, and now we're starting to see a major correction. These are the stocks that are basically participating in this bear market. Atmos Energy is actually holding up a little better, but it has corrected back to the blue line here, which is about a 17 PE ratio. Activision Blizzard, interestingly, you can see how the price tracks earnings. It got overvalued. Boom, comes back into fair value, starts producing some good numbers, gets overvalued again. This time it goes to the extreme and gets really undervalued, and now it's kind of returning back to attractive valuation. It's still an attractive valuation, but it's reverting back from being dramatically undervalued. Valuation matters, and it matters a lot. Avery Dennison, you can see overvaluation the stock price beginning to come down. American Waterworks has been a really hot stock for a long time. It's been overvalued for now several years. We're starting to see potentially that the valuation may be finally catching up to it. Boeing, which had a bunch of troubles. You can see how the earnings related to the stock price or the stock price related to the earnings. Then, of course, COVID, we had this massive correction. It's kind of rose again. Now we're starting to see it correcting. It's still got a long ways to go before it gets down into fair value, as most of these stocks do. Brown Foreman, very high-quality company, got dramatically overvalued. We're starting to see some real volatility here. We're starting to see the stock beginning to correct back to the downside into fair valuation. BioRed Labs, another one that's dropped dramatically here just in the last you know couple of months, be since the beginning of the year, after being massively overvalued for much of the last two years. Even the mighty BlackRock is starting to show some weakness in its price because of valuation. The company's doing well, valuation is bad. Ceridian holding it's you know starting to show you know the fact that overvaluation is just you know the stock is just too high to be supported by the fundamentals. Cadence Design is another one that tracks earnings. You can see the price dropping dramatically. So we're starting to see this over and over. Clorox participated in COVID. Obviously, everybody was buying their bleach products, but now the stock is beginning to correct. But again, still has a ways to go. So how low could the market go? With looking at these, you know, 20% of the market here, there's still some room to go. Comcast got overvalued. It's recently come back into fair value territory. Chipotle Mexican Grill has been perennially overvalued, but now it got significantly overvalued by the end of last year. It's now correcting back to more normal valuations. Cummins got overvalued last year. It's now moved back into fair valuation. This is the diesel manufacturer. Copart, which is you know another one that tracked earnings beautifully, and then inexplicably, as this market became irrational in my view, irrationally exuberant to put to put it mildly, and we're starting to see a correction occurring in Copart. Here's Charles Rivers Lab, another one that trades you know at what I'll call reasonable or prudent valuations. Typically, it got significantly overvalued. We're starting to see a big correction in it. Catalan Inc., another one that you know likes to be valued highly by the market, but it got too high, and you can see the stock price is falling dramatically back into fair value. Citrix Systems got really overvalued. It's now corrected. It's, start, it's starting to rally again, but it's, you know, the overvaluation that cannot hold those high levels. That's the real key. Danaher, a very high-quality company, always traded at, or typically traded at a reasonable valuation. Got crazy. Now we're starting to see a chink in the armor here as well. Disney, Disney is, you know, tracking its earnings. It got massively overvalued. The stock has been really a weak performer for the last year, and I believe, you know, we still have a long way to go. The future looks bright for Disney, but to buy Disney at today's valuation, I believe, would be a mistake. Domino's Pizza, another one that's, you know, correcting dramatically. Um, you can see this pattern over and over again. Darden Restaurants beginning to correct and flatten. Dexcom, healthcare equipment is starting to see a chink in the armor. Valuation is starting to rear its ugly head. Equifax, we can see how it tracked earnings. You can see the price now beginning to correct as this market is beginning to go through a correction phase with the you know threats of interest rates rising and so on. Estee Lauder starting to show you know the effects of high valuation. Emerson Electric is starting to show uh, the effects of high valuation, a very high quality company. Here's one End phase energy, you can see how massively overvalued it got. It's already corrected a lot and you know still has a way to correct, in my opinion. It's still overvalued. 
EPAM has corrected significantly, still has a way to go, in my opinion. Etsy, which has been a really hot, popular stock, you know, people selling their products on Etsy, you can see how it just got absurdly overvalued, and now it's corrected dramatically here just recently. So you can see really the effects of and the danger and the risk of overvaluation by looking at Etsy. Same with Fidelity National Information Services. Got really highly valued the stocks, but nothing but volatile in the last year, two years now, you know, correcting back into something that's more reasonable. Fiserv, a great data processing company, similar, you know, two years or three years of really no return, simply due to valuation, not to performance. Fleet Court Technologies, you know, great growth stock, doing really well, attractively valued now after being overvalued for much of the last couple of years. These are the effects of valuation. First Republic Bank, you know, looking like it's coming down. Fortinet Inc. Valuation is rearing its ugly head again. Generac Holdings, a generator company, you can see how the price tracked earnings. Look how much this stock has already corrected, and yet still has a way to go. You know, all these stocks are heading to their orange line, in my opinion, eventually. Global Payments um, is another one that, you know, I actually featured in a video a while back. It's come down dramatically and became reasonably valued. And look how, the, after it got undervalued, how it recovered back to fair value. So you can see how important valuation is. Garmin, Garmin got way overvalued. It's now coming back into reasonable valuation. Honeywell, similarly, tracked earnings beautifully. You know, COVID brought it into reality, got overpriced again. Now we're starting to see the stock moving back into fair value. Yamana was overvalued. It's now actually moved back into fair value, and now it's bumped up again. So valuation ultimately has its impact on stock values. IDEX Labs, you can see how overvalued it got. Just ridiculous. These are just totally irrational numbers. You can see the price coming back down into fair value. Illumina Inc., another one that, you know, really didn't do anything for a couple of years and got really hot. Now it's coming back, you know, towards fair value. It's, it's correcting. IHS Market Limited, you can start to see the correction occurring in it, into it. You know, very hot stock. You can start seeing that overvaluation just really couldn't support the prices that it was. IPG Photonics Corp., again, way overvalued, coming back into something that's a little more rational. Intuitive Surgical, very hot stock for many years, is now correcting after being massively overvalued once again. Jacobs Engineering, you can see how closely it tracks earnings. You can see what happened when valuation got extended in the past, and now we're starting to see signs of that happening again. Great company, if you can buy it at the right price, was significantly overvalued. Keysight Technologies, very, very similar. KMX, CarMax, you know, got pretty hot, got pretty overvalued. It's now come back into fair valuation territory. Lido's holding was overvalued. It's now undervalued. It's come back into fair value and maybe holding up a little better in recent months. Leggett and Platt, the betting company, really great company, got overvalued. The stock is now completely reverted to the mean. Lamb Research, a pretty hot tech stock. We're starting to see it coming back. These names, are, a lot of these names are names you might want to start watching as they're moving into fair value territory where you'd get a chance to maybe get some prudent capital invested in microchip technologies, undervalued Moody's, you know, starting to show signs of moving back into fair value. Medtronic, the healthcare equipment or appliances company, you know, you can see it got dramatically overvalued. You can see how bad overvaluation was for it back to between the two, the last two recessions. Then it got cheap and the stock performed well. But now we've got, you know, we've got too overvalued and it's now moving back. Market taxes, holdings, you know, massively overvalued, moving back into fair value. Monolith, look how much this stock has corrected already. These stocks are all suffering from excessive valuation, in my opinion. MSCI, the partner with Standard & Poor's Global, that does the GIX codes, you know, the company's starting to show signs of being overly valued and coming back into fair value. Even the mighty Microsoft is starting to show, although it's held up better than most of many of the others I showed you, it's beginning to show that it's moving into corrective territory. Motorola, similarly, it's starting to show signs of moving back into fair value. NASDAQ, which traded at regular earnings, we're starting to see it come back into you know reasonable valuations. Next Era Energy, my absolute favorite utility, you know, Florida Pyre and Light, if you will. The stock is now starting to show signs of 
you know, the excess valuation that it has enjoyed is now starting to get, you know, corrected as time goes on here. Netflix, you know, it's been real hot. The stock is even showing a little stress with uh, subscribers. The stock is beginning to revert back to the mean. And, you know, sometimes it makes sense to take off the normal P. You can see how much this stock has actually corrected here. You know, just in the in the last couple of months, you know, the bear market is beginning to take its toll. The mighty Nike, you know, starting to show signs of coming back into fair value. NVIDIA, you know, big correction in the stock price here recently. You look at Newell Brands, you saw this massive overvaluation, major correction, got overvalued again, beginning to correct again. You can just see overvaluation impact when you look at these stocks. Old Dominion Freight Line, perfectly tracked earnings until the last couple of years, and now we're starting to see a movement back into fair value. There may be opportunities to buy. Oracle has tracked earnings that consistently. The correlations here have been very high, got overvalued recently, is beginning to come back into fair value now as the market goes through this correcting process. Paycom Software is one that was, you know, trading at, you know, this is a 47 PE on this stock. So it's a growth stock and it traded at a high multiple. But, you know, the multiple got really crazy. It's still trading at 69 times earnings. You know, it got up to 127 times earnings. But now, you know, it, that's been virtually cut in half just in the last, we'll say, four or five months on the stock. Pentair, another one that, you know, cyclical stock that tracks earnings, got really crazy valued. We're seeing valuation come down. PayPal, this is a classic to me. Look how much this stock has corrected here recently just after being so overvalued for the last couple of years. You know, here you got a situation where the, the correction is almost already complete, as some of the others I've shown you here. ResMed, you can see the stock correcting dramatically. Rockwell Automation, stock price is starting to, you know, feel the effects of overvaluation. Rollins has been, you know, really dead money for a couple of years again, not because the business done badly, but because valuation was just extensive. Raw stores is you know beginning to correct from being very highly valued. Of course, raw stores had problems being in malls and they you know they suffered with COVID, but the stock's recovering now, but yet the price, you know, the weight of the price against even a recovering earnings was too great. Starbucks, we're starting to see some correction action going on at Starbucks. Here's Solar Edge Technologies, the tech stock that just is, you know, overvaluation just killed their performance over the last couple of years and created a lot of volatility. And now the stock is beginning to move back into alignment. Sherwin Williams is showing, you know, big spikes. These are all the overvalued stocks in the S&P that I found that are starting to show and suffer. There's still some that are holding up, but many of them are already starting to correct. Snap on, I featured before, it's come down pretty dramatically in value. Synopsis is beginning to correct and could correct a lot further. S&P Global is beginning to show some signs of weakness. Semper Energy corrected. It's still a little overpriced right now, but not bad. But you can see after COVID when it was overpriced for so long, how quickly it corrected and got back into something sensible. Stanley Black & Decker got significantly overvalued. It's now come back to where it's close to being fairly valued. Skyworks got overvalued. It was tracking earnings and strong earnings growth, but it's now become uh, even possibly offering a slight margin of safety right now. Biotin, you can see how much the correction was here. You know, the beauty of this is I can go through this many companies this quickly with fast graphs. You know, here is, you know, stock that just, you know, had some improvement in earnings. The market got irrationally exuberant. The price is beginning to show the effects of that, beginning to correct. Teradyne got crazy overvalued here. It's now begun to correct and come back into fair value. Teleflex, you know, was tracking earnings beautifully, got way overvalued. There's no reason for these valuations. The stocks are now starting to show, you know, the wear and tear of that overvaluation. Even the mighty target, which got pretty crazy overvalued, is now starting to come back into a reasonable valuation range. Trimble, another one you can see just over and over again, you see the patterns. Well, this is one-fifth of the S&P 500. T. Rowe Price has went from being overvalued to now becoming very, very attractive in my opinion, train, you know, has, you know, really just exploded in valuation. It's now beginning to correct and come back into a reasonable valuation. Take two interactive, you know, the gaming company, it's starting to show some wear and tear from being overvalued. So there you have it, 110 names, all constituents of the S&P 500, all of them being overvalued. 
and now beginning to come back into fair value. So most of this valuation anomaly, as you saw here, was from you know stocks like the ones I've showed you here in this video that were massively overvalued. And so they're the ones that are starting to feel really the, the biggest effect from, you know, what's been happening in the marketplace here. So, you know, be aware the market still has about, in my view, as a general market, we probably have 25% to 30% capability, you know, potential drop in the market if the stock price got back to the 15 PE, about a 20% correction here. But many stocks in the S&P are still dramatically overvalued. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. This is Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very high level, very you know quick look at over a hundred stocks in the S out of the S and P five hundred. You know, twenty percent of the constituency, if you will, that was suffering through you know or, or enjoying, I guess you might say, massive, significant overvaluation, who are now beginning to suffer the effects of that and begin to get more reasonably priced. So you know, this market may give us buying opportunities in the future. Maybe a few months from now maybe a few weeks from now. I don't know, but as long as the Fed starts, keeps talking about raising interest rates, I do believe the, the market is vulnerable. So just a word of caution, pay attention, but also be looking out for value that's coming your way as these stocks begin to correct themselves. If you like this video, give me a like, ring the bell so you can you know join the subscribe to the channel so you can see other videos like this. I'll be uh, talking to you again real soon. Everybody have a great weekend. And I hope you enjoyed this. It was something a little different, but I did want you to see how much valuation was really wrecking havoc on these stocks in the market right now. Thanks for watching.